What's up, everybody? Welcome. What am I going to talk about today? Let's talk about one of my favorite hobbies that I've been into recently, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Now, a lot of people that I talk to, uh, be that at work or friends that don't know the sport, it's difficult to explain. The only way I explain it to novices is wrestling. And then if you're really interested, because most people aren't after hearing it the first time, if you're really interested, I tell you it's wrestling with submissions. And that's the name of the game. I've become addicted to jujitsu recently, and it's come to my attention from my girlfriend and others that it could be a little extreme. Let me tell you why it's not. I love the competition that jujitsu brings you. There is no other sport quite like it. Uh, I've done boxing before, not for any significant period of time, but I've done the classes before. I've done kickboxing, Muay Thai. There's nothing quite like the camaraderie of training jiu-jitsu multiple times a week with people. It has this ability to addict people. What I always find funny is it always addicts people the most when they seem to have some sort of void or pain that they have in their life. That is obviously not true across the board. It's a blanket statement. I will say, though, that the people that get the most out of it are people that do get addicted to it. They do get the love for it. They they, they love the atmosphere, the art, the lifestyle that jiu-jitsu brings them. The lifestyle that it brings me is one of uh, ultimately peace, tranquility, because after training, you're so tired, you don't really care if someone approaches you in the street, you have that confidence. If you have to pass some hobo down the street and he's he's running his mouth, he's screaming in the top of his lungs. Yeah, sure, there is some stress signals that go off as any human should have. For someone who practices jujitsu, though, and specifically someone who's just got out of training and then encounters something like that, you have this sense of calm, this sense of ease that the training is so difficult. It's so rigorous for people. You get tapped out so many times by people bigger and smaller than you. You know the different body types. You have that close contact. You have that, you know, the bumps and bruises. Another fight is it's normal to you. If you get to a certain point of training, it's, 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 it wouldn't be so much as a, of a surprise as it would be for some layman to get into a fight or get into a confrontation or have confrontation. What jujitsu has given me is a big sense of, of, uh, jujitsu introduced me to myself. Jujitsu obviously puts you into situations where you feel discomfort. It obviously puts you into situations where you don't feel like you're going to win. You have to fight anyway. The guy's bigger than you. He's more. He's stronger than you. He looks more athletic. Not only looks more athletic, probably is more athletic. It doesn't matter. you got to train with him anyway. you got to spar. you got to see what he's got. And jiu-jitsu has introduced me to myself in a way that the big guys, the ones with muscles, all that stuff... I've beaten them before and I've beaten them because I'm more dedicated to the sport. I'm more passionate about the art than they are. They don't train as much as me. If they trained as much as me, obviously they could beat me and it wouldn't be close because they obviously have the size and strength advantage, which is real in jujitsu. But for people who don't train or are inconsistent with their training, when they encounter a smaller guy like me and get beat by me, they wonder, fuck, this, this sport really isn't isn't for me. That's simply not the case. It doesn't matter what size. it. I believe it matters what weight you are. You don't want to be at an unhealthy low weight, which is why I didn't train when I was going through my health issues. Because I didn't feel as if I wasn't at a healthy weight to to really do anything of significance other than maybe technique, but even technique would kind of hurt my body, you know. Yeah, I've seen I've seen huge, you know, plus 250 guys train and not 250 athletic 250, 250 like I just ate some potato chips and a fucking chocolate cake type of 250. 
going up against those guys is it's all experience you get you get used to going up against all different body types all different mentalities you go up against people that they want to kill you they don't realize this is training and you're a training you're a fellow training partner they just want to kill you because their ego is so big and you got to go up against those guys too and when they tap you it's the worst it's the it's the absolute worst they don't approach it from a wanting to learn perspective they approach it from a wanting to win all the time perspective and at a certain point uh, mentality like that gets unhealthy and even though i'm a white belt still at uh three basically three years doing the sport i've seen so many people come and go i've seen so many people quit so many people that have started with me that quit and that's sad that's sad because I bet they quit because it gets too difficult or it gets too hard or someone lower than them, a lower rank or lower body weight uh, tapped them and they feel insecure about it and they won't return to the mats and keep putting in that work and keep learning. J learning more about the art of jujitsu is a daily thing. You never learn all of it, which is why it intrigues me so much is because there is so much to learn at such a high rate and there are consequences for how much work you put in which i believe is analogous to life there are consequences if you've only been going two days as opposed to six days if you've only been putting a half-ass amount of work versus you know a savage amount of work there's gonna it's gonna show in your work ethic it's gonna show in your game it's one of the most fair things that i've ever accomplished in my life and for that reason i train it's and sometimes it's not fair sometimes you know this past month or two i've gone up against a complete novice but he's you know six he's over six foot and he's over 200 pounds for sure and i'm under six foot and i'm 140 pounds on a good day so i've gone up against those people who are complete novices and there's me doing the sport for two two years consistently and they're tapping me and you have to realize that it's okay. It's, you're going to get tapped by even new people. I'm still new. I still approach every day in jiu-jitsu as if I can learn something that will completely change my game for the better. The camaraderie it's given me, the mentality it's given me, it's it definitely promotes a dog mentality. Because if you show up every day, you're consistent I don't want to say every day. I don't show up every day. How often do I go to jiu-jitsu? I do my best to go four days a week. Four days a week. And I don't I don't know which days, depending on my schedule, it can move around. I do my best to go four days, though. It When I say show up every day, every day that you go, you got to show up and give your all. Whether it's focusing all the time, all your attention on the, on the day... Or whether it's going balls out and training, you know, within reason. It's it's given me so, so much and it's enriched my life to a, an unexpected degree. To now where I, when I watch MMA, which I knew nothing about before, and now I get it. Now I get in terms of uh, technique, uh, applying body weight pressure, applying the right pressure in the right places at the right time. It's all such a, I don't want to say chess match, that's such a cliche with jujitsu. I would, the only way I could describe it is the most unique art that, uh, that is not a big art. Like when I say big art, I mean like movies, music. It's such a, it's such an art of the body and the mind that it's addicting to me. And that's why I train. Thank you for listening.